We'll do a full Dynamite report later, but obviously the big stories coming out of the show. We have a new AW champion for the fourth time, by the way, because he was fourth? listed as a three-time champion when he was coming down to the ring. So I guess they're now counting the interim championship as a title reign. So John Moxley beat Brian Danielson. Well, when he won, when he won, he said three-time champion. Well, someone needs to get their story straight because yeah. uh, as he was coming down to the ring, uh, they listed him as a three-time champion. So, okay. Anyway, uh, he beat Brian Danielson, and the acclaimed won the tag team titles as pretty much everybody expected. And Chris Jericho won the Ring of Honor title from Claudio Castagnoli. And so three title changes on a great show with an incredible crowd. Yes, yeah, great crowd. Um, the first million dollar gate for a television show that they've done. They've done three for pay-per-views. They've done four million dollar gates since the end of May. Um, are people still saying that they're dying? I don't think people are saying that they're dying. Okay. I have people still saying stuff like uh, they're... They're failing, so I don't know. They don't seem failing to me. Although there is there is some concern in, in certain places of, of things, and legitimate concern, but the idea that they're failing or dying is, is ludicrous, and people who are saying why, all the stuff they're doing wrong. Um, and, you know, hey, there's some stuff they're doing wrong, but if you're going to say they're doing stuff wrong, you better be saying they're doing a lot of stuff right because you don't do business like that. I mean, a secondary company... Number two company doing business like this on a, at least for big shows on a regular basis. Um, there have only been a few million dollar gates for television in the history of this country. And um, I mean, very, very few. Um, I think that WWE may have done, because they charge higher ticket prices at the Garden than anywhere else. So WWE for sold out Garden tapings in the last couple of years may have topped a million. I think they did. Um, I know that they have topped a million in um, London at, when they run the O2, not when they run Wembley. But well, for, for like sold out Raws, because I've seen, I have seen those gates. Um, uh, and, you know, even going back a couple years. So, um, but they hadn't done that. They probably have not done that, that type of a number in many, many years, but they have done it in the past. So, I mean, you're probably can count it on i don't want to say one hand but certainly on two hands the number of times this has ever happened and so this this was a very big milestone for aw and and just impressive historically in wrestling to do something like this so um they they did uh, it was 1.02 million is what the it ended up being so uh anyway that's they uh did you see the picture of the guy who who was the who sold who Bought the ticket to put him over a million. Oh, and they gave him a uh, uh, chair with all of the guys in the tournament autographed. Yeah, yeah, he looked like a he freaking looked looked like Kenny Omega. Like, yeah, um, just I don't think totally... Kenny Omega should have been allowed to enter this. Enter what? It was a joke. Anyway, yeah. So uh, a lot of new champions. Great show. It was a great show. Yeah, and. Um, I thought that Jericho winning the championship was was actually was a great great idea, um, you know, to to get the Ring of Honor title, make it really big because anything Jericho has in that company is going to be big. Moxley is champion, so there's an interesting political thing with Moxley as champion because um, Moxley and Nick Gage have a match, and Nick Gage has to retire if he loses. So I figured that that was going to be the way to get the championship off Moxley. It's in Atlantic City in uh, just a couple of weeks. All right, we're back. We had to uh, handle a situation. But anyway, when the match was first announced. So yeah, when the match was first announced, um, well, I mean, the, the, this, this is a Moxley-Nick Gage match. When that match was first announced, Moxley wasn't scheduled to be AEW champion at the time. Punk was going to be champion. So he wasn't even scheduled to be on TV at the time. He was supposed to be on vacation. Right. He was going to just do the one match. That's right. He was going to come because he was supposed to come back for the Cincinnati show, which, by the way, will be he will be defending the championship in Cincinnati, which we'll talk about later. But um, the so so 
it made sense for him to lose that GCW title. Uh, but now it's a politically weird thing because Tony's not going to want his world champion losing a match on an independent show. Um, so I don't know how they're going to do it. I mean, maybe he'll give, you know, maybe he'll do it just because of the nature of the stipulation and, and that they basically are backed into a corner. I don't know how that's going to be handled. It's going to be very interesting. Well, you know, I don't know what Tony's going to say about this, but uh, the fact of the matter is this summer, John Moxley saved his ass, and he probably owes him a favor. You only got the championship. <laughs> well, that might be the favor. Well, I mean, you know, he did, but I don't think that Moxley asked the... for it for a favor. I'm sure that he was going to do whatever, but I mean. Uh, I'm not so sure. Uh, well, I mean, as far as like, um, yeah, no, he, I mean, he put the championship on him when, um, when Punk got hurt the first time, the interim championship, because he thought it was the best guy for the job and the guy to, you know, uh, have the best situation to build up Punk before Punk faced MJF, which was the, the original plan for, um, Chicago was Punk and MJF. But because Punk got hurt and had to win the championship or win the unif you know, win the championship back, they had to delay Punk and MJF until um, whenever they're going to, well, they were, you know, it was going to be for the November pay per view for full gear. So it's probably Moxley and MJF at full gear, most likely. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, he carried the title, did a great job. I suppose he owes him a favor in that sense. Um, but he's the champion, so it's not like um, you know he. It's not like it's not like he did a favor and then kind of turned his back on him. He put the title on him again, which in this case tonight, I mean, he he you know he could have gone with Danielson just as easy. I mean, it would not have been either guy could have won. It would have been just fine. Um, I know a lot of people wanted Danielson to win because it's new. Um, I, I mean, my gut is is for the dynamic um, that that. Moxley versus MJF for the dynamic is better than Danielson versus MJF. So Moxley's the guy to go with um, in the situation. But I do think that I do think Danielson should win that championship at some point. And I think people want to see it. And, um, you know, at some point, probably in 2023. Uh, but, you know, I mean, again, that depends on a lot of different things. I mean, where they go with the title and um, um What's drawing, what's not drawing, you know, I mean, it's not like it's a must that he has to do it or Danielson's owed it. If it's the right thing to do at the time, uh, it's it would be a good thing to do. So, um, but there's, you know, there's a lot of guys in a lot of different situations and, and uh, that can transpire and who knows what's going to happen, you know. I mean, you know, Punk may come back for all we know, you know, not for a while, you know, probably not for seven, eight months, but um, at that point, he might come back and you know who knows what will happen then so there's there's a lot of things in play um you know i don't think there's anything long term that's you know set up in stone hey if you're a big fan of wrestling observer radio we got twelve thousand episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website wrestlingobserver.com if you sign up today you get access to every single one of them the 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.